What is going on you guys? My name is Rage and we are back today with some incursion raid video guides for you all. Uh, actually going through one of the hardest nodes in my honest opinion based on what I've kind of seen collectively. Now I've only been doing these raids for a couple weeks now uh, with my alliance but uh, definitely a pain point is the mystic node. So in today's video we're going to be doing a full video on just the first node because I noticed this is a pain point for a lot of people going in and honestly it's not that bad when you have the proper game plan and strategy. I'll show you what works with the five characters I'm using but as well I've seen some uh, lots of different variations of the strategy but you guessed it there's probably gonna be some very common themes that we're gonna be seeing so i'm gonna you know point out all those characters but as well showing you the gameplay so first and foremost guys probably want hands down one of the best characters in the game if you have morgan Le Fay, uh she's a must-have for this just because of her ultimate that can actually you know inflict a boatload of negative conditions on the enemy as well as her time warp giving us back time and ensuring that some enemies that are you know crowd controlled they're going to stay that way for sure so without a doubt get your morgan Le Fay as high as possible um, next up we have the energy granting from dev pool you know i love the fact that now she's considered a staple especially with her being part of apocalypse's unlock uh it makes sense now uh, to bring her up as high as you can and to have that synergy as well uh, with the other strike characters is huge especially with her granting energy to her fellow mystic allies goes well with saying that you can't have a strong mystic raid team uh without the eternals combination of cersei and icarus uh cersei is really there to you know make icarus shine brighter but as well bring in the cleanse and a useful stun that's going to help in kind of managing the waves themselves uh you know it goes well with saying her abilities but she definitely does shine together with icarus and having said that icarus is a difference maker guys if he's getting energy and using his ultimate over and over that's really going to be the difference maker here of making sure you manage those waves effectively especially uh uh, against these very very abnormally strong enemies in the incursion rates and then last but not least guys there's a couple of options that we can utilize dr doom is a common one i've seen uh with his ultimate and revive uh, excuse me not revive his ultimate in giving more turn meter and then doing a devastating ability but personally i did not use him but i've seen him as an option i've also seen spider weaver as an option as well with her ultimate to essentially be able to reduce damage but she's really important in the second node so i do like to save on her uh no guys instead my option is actually going to be uh sorry scrolling down here dormammu um and why you ask i know a lot of players are going to be you know saying that he's not a great option and so forth but i want to showcase for you guys in my video how he's useful because of the fact that he does have value even outside of his revive um that which is completely vetoed in these nodes uh however he has a strong heal and as well a useful stun that's for crowd controlling aspects so let me show you guys the gameplay i think uh he can be a huge difference maker but there's gonna be some multiple options do what works best for your roster in total i think my uh total combat power ended up being 1 million and as well for your guys's reference uh this was a difficulty 1.2 attempt so that said let, let's get right into it guys so as you can see, my team is not even that strong, guys. Just as shy of a million. Um, so it goes to show you, it's not about the combat power for this attempt, but really about the strategy and overall wave management. Uh, really who to target and, and prioritizing. So first and foremost, you're not going to get a lot of options from the beginning of this turn here. Um, utilizing Morgan Phase is probably going to be one of the first abilities you, you can utilize. Next up, we want to reduce all their turn meter uh, and, and be aiming for key targets in both Kestro and as well as Spider Weaver. So I activate Icarus's ultimate there. And then again, we're going to be resuming our damage and just focusing on those heavy hitters in the middle just because uh, you will see that they're going to be doing a lot of damage if we're not careful. Next up, when you do get Death Pool's turn here, uh, if you if there's a character that you can use bleeds on, I do like to split, spread bleeds, but as well, you could have done the same for any ability blocks to kind of prevent them from obviously going. Uh, and next up with Dormammu, this is kind of like why I like using him on here because of his useful stun. Uh, he can actually buy us some time and stopping those characters from actually utilizing a turn uh, and also gives us a chance now to focus on that right side uh, and focusing on them. The reason we want to be focusing on enemies as well that are weaker is because of the fact that uh, they're going to be getting us energy when Death Pool does take them down. So I go ahead, I stun Spider Weaver once again. Uh, you're going to see I'm just going ahead and using a lot of judgment on her just because you'll see if, if she stays around Kestrel too much uh, in this node, uh, they're going to be the difference makers of making it the most hellish node ever. And you really want to start this off right, especially with five of the most powerful characters in the game. At this point, she have another chance to use uh, Cersei's ultimate to re reduce their turn meter. We still see their uh, Spider Weaver obviously being stunned, which is absolutely huge for us. And then now we go ahead and start kind of focusing on some of the targets that, you know, can benefit their team. So Captain Sam, um, you know, he's great in the sense to provide turn meter and protection. That's why we do want to focus on him. And so as long as our Spider Weaver is still stunned, uh, you know, we're in a great position. 
And this is one of the reasons why I do like Dormammu being here. Um, there's some node runs where I've done where my team's not doing so hot in terms of their HP, and Dormammu serves as a great way to, you know, grant them additional HP, but as well himself immunity. Uh, just some overall great protection, right? And at this point, with Weaver down, a couple of enemies on the left side, we're in a great position, guys. Finished uh, crowd controlling and stunning Shang-Chi, and in a great position to finish and prepare for, uh, obviously, the next node. But as well, you can see how straightforward it is uh, once you actually carefully manage these guys and making sure they don't, they don't even move, right? And I know some players opt to take down, um, you know, Ghost Rider, uh, so that way you can't do the passive attacks. But you may not get that choice with Bishop here spawning, right? So that's the one thing to be mindful of. Uh, when you are able to, um, I do recommend if you're able to control uh, a Ghost Rider or at least kind of stall him and slow him down with a stun, then he can't do the passive attacks. But another one we do have to focus then is making sure uh, Death Pool and Kestrel are also kind of controlled. So take a look at the return meter. Uh, obviously, it's going to be deferring from attempt to attempt, but uh, managing those two is big because of the fact that they have strong abilities and as well, uh, you don't want to leave Death Pool um, too strong on the enemy side because if there's multiple attempts involved, she may gain charges and her gaining charges could be very, very dangerous with her instant one kill uh, shot. So be mindful of that, guys. And now at this point, you should be down to a couple of Nakias, uh, maybe a Ghost Rider, uh, and as well as Bishop at the end. That's okay. This is a good manageable wave that you can leave uh, and then start using basic attacks to kind of save up energy uh, and really ultimately preparing for uh, the next node here. So pretty smooth, guys. Like I said, one of my better runs here. But overall, it's all about wave management. And like I said, you don't need a strong Mystic team. Uh, mine was just shy over a million, and they still did really good. And you can see all of them are pretty much full HP. And I, I think, you know, largely due to Dormammu having that support capability and controlling aspect. So hope this helps you guys progress further in your incursion rates. Let me know what you think. Thank you as always, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.